Good evening and welcome to Vespers at Charter House. Today we celebrate the time after Pentecost with a simple service of evening prayer. I wish you peace as we gather. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, your mercy delights us and the world longs for your love and care. Hear the cries of everyone in need and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from Leviticus chapter 19. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Here ends the first reading. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25. To you, O love, I list up my soul. O heart within my heart, in you I place my trust. Let me know that I am worthy before you. Let not fear rule over me. Yes, may all who open their hearts savor you and bless the earth. Compel me to know your ways, O love. Instruct me upon your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for through you will I know wholeness. I shall reflect your light both day and night. I know of your mercy, blessed one, and of your unconditional love. You have been with me from the beginning. Forgive the many times I have walked away from you, choosing to follow my own will. I seek your guidance. Once again, I yearn to know your peace. Companion me as I open to your will. You are gracious and just, O spirit of truth, happy to guide those who miss their way. You enjoy teaching all who are open, all who choose to live in truth. Your paths are loving and sure, O Holy One. And those who give witness to you through their lives are blessed beyond measure. Let us pray. Merciful God, you continually show us your ways of forgiveness and steadfast love. Remember not our sins, but recall your compassion to your children. Satisfy the longing of your people and fulfill all our hopes for eternal peace. We ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, for your name's sake. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down to, from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. 
Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Here ends the gospel reading. <clears throat> How does a person preach on a story that is so well known and loved? Well, first of all, I'd like to highlight the fact that the lawyer who came to question Jesus wanted what we all want. He wanted to live, really live with the life that goes on living. And also, he knew his scriptures very, very well. When Jesus asked what is written in the law, the lawyer quotes from Deuteronomy 6.5 and Leviticus 19.18, the two great commandments, love God and love your neighbor. The first commandment about loving God is the Shema, which every Jewish child knows by heart, beginning with hear, Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. It is the prayer that the lawyer in this story would have recited twice every day as an adult Jewish man. And let's keep in mind that Jesus himself also was an adult Jewish man. So he would have also had this prayer, the Shema, deep in his heart and mind. Our gospel text is the story of the Good Samaritan, and it's about the second of Jesus' great commandments. From way back, this commandment also lived in the hearts of all Jewish people. And I quote, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The concern for the stranger and alien is embedded deep throughout the Torah. God makes very clear to the people of Israel that they should care for the strangers and aliens among them. God loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 10, 18 and 19. Why do we love the stranger and the alien? Notice the repeated refrain in Leviticus, repeated not only in these two verses, but over and over again. I am the Lord your God. God created all people, and our concern for all people simply takes down the fences of our own tribes. We are to care beyond our own groups, and this is very challenging, especially today. The best example I can find for Good Samaritans is our staff here at Charter House. Their names just rush into my mind because I have seen them working and caring and helping. Donnie, Megan, Sophie, Tanya, Laura, and on and on. In season and out of season, in the day and in the night. Not only nursing staff, but including custodial, housekeeping, IT, marketing, and everything in between. You can say, well, they are paid to help us. <laughs> they are paid to care. Yes, but are they richly paid? No, they are not. Certainly not. 
And even if they were richly paid, would it be enough to keep them helping? I don't think so. No, to do this, they must care. They must find somehow the wellsprings of compassion within them. They must be, according to Jesus' teaching, like God. What is the meaning of the word when Jesus says, and seeing him, he had compassion on him? The word in Greek is very special. Splankthizomai, very special word. This word, splankthizomai, he had compassion, occurs only three times in all of Luke. In the other two instances, only God's agent, Jesus. When Jesus sees the woman grieving for her only son in Luke 7, 13, he has compassion on her. And again in Luke 15, 20, when the father of the prodigal son, a figure for God, shows compassion. In other words, showing compassion is a divine prerogative. It is a divine action. So we realize that the Good Samaritan, who, when he shows compassion on the man in the ditch, is functioning as God's own person, as God's agent. What does it mean to have compassion? It means we must be willing to first see our neighbor and have our hearts open and broken for them. It's no longer who is my neighbor, sifting and judging and sorting out people. Instead, what Jesus tells us changes it. It's now, what kind of neighbor am I? I love this because it puts the agency on me and on you as we listen to Jesus. Out of the heart then comes our action as we open our arms to hug that person who needs us, to help them stand our hands to hold theirs and our resources to heal and support them. I think that to have this compassion and take this action to help others is one and the same with having eternal life. That's my key idea here. This is what it is to share the very life of God. But sitting back in velvet cushions, resting on our laurels, having others wait on us eternally beside the streets of gold, is that living? No, it is not. Living is pouring ourselves out to serve and love. That is living the real life. Having life is to care and love. Let our hearts be broken open with the energies of God until we love all the world willingly and gladly with no more thought than a bird has when it opens up its beak to sing, holding nothing back, no hesitance, just giving. And those who have found this path do not wonder what the young lawyer wondered. They already know what they must do to have eternal life. They're already doing it. They're already living it. The story of the Good Samaritan is one of the best known and most beloved of all Jesus' teachings. As well known as it is, it needs constant repeating because its message is absolutely necessary to understand what Christianity is. The Christian faith following Jesus moves us to reach out with compassion beyond our own groups. Our neighbors are the ones who needs us. Thanks be to God, amen. Let us pray the prayers of evening, ending with the Lord's Prayer. O oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. We pray 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing Vespers with me this evening. We sincerely thank you and our staff for making the effort to be connected during this worship time. Remember that God loves you and I love you. And I invite you now to receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.